going to set up for two baptisms for Sunday and set up for the Sunday services. So what we need to do is get the baptismal pitcher down. And we also have some scallop shells and we need to get those down, take out two. And these are the scallop shells. and it looks like it doesn't need to be polished, but we are going to rinse it out. And if you'll get a towel from down there, no, down below. she's drying that, we also give to our baptismal candidates a lava bow towel. Each one of them gets one. Um, <laughs> I can't get it out. I guess it needs to be cut. It's been a while since we've done a baptism, obviously. This is a small lava bow towel. This is the lava bow towel we use during the service, but because the priests are not having people help them set up the, the altar, they don't need to use this. And what they're doing is using the um, hand sanitizer instead. But the purpose of, of this at a baptism is to help dry the, the recipient's forehead after they've had the water and put on their forehead. So we give them a small one because so often mamas would take the big lava bow towel home and then we were without them. So we have these small ones and it's folded in thirds. It's folded in thirds lengthwise. It's folded this way and this way and then in half just as the large one is done and that's not exactly right I refold that because I was doing it standing up so One lava bow towel, one scallop shell. Do you want to hold this one? Do you want me to? I think you should. Gail is a brand new member of the right. Altar Guild, and she's learning as we go along. the baptism right now and we were getting ready for the 1030 service we would fill this pitcher up to about here with very 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 warm water and because it takes forever for us to get hot water here the best thing to do is to get the water from the kitchen 
um, not, not hot, hot, but very, very warm, close to hot, because it will cool off by the time we get to the baptism. And if we put cold water in there, then that cold water would shock, especially when it's an infant, and right. that's when they cry and scream. Yeah. So when we use very, very warm water, yeah. it's it's like a, a bath. Mm -hmm. So what we would, we're gonna take these down now to show what it would be if we were setting up for 1030. So we're gonna pretend that this has very hot water in it, and I'll let you take those. I can do that. All I'll right. Follow you. And then we need the chrism oil. The chrism oil is kept in the armory. And I'll get that and bring it back and show you that. You don't have to. And the chrism oil goes there. What Gail has done is she takes the bowl from the baptismal font that had water in it and dumps it outside. And then she um, dries off the baptismal bowl, washes it and dries it off. And then she's going to put it in there empty. because the new baptismal water for the font will be there when Father Will baptizes the two uh, children. Okay. Oh, yeah, we can take No, we need that. So we're going to put that over here. On this side? Mm -hmm. okay. And these are all like, like that? Huh? We, we're going to put the baptismal pitcher and the two shells with the lava botals right here waiting um, for the 10 o'clock service. So now we're going to set up for the 8 a.m. service. Right now we're using wafers that have a drop of wine on them so that we get wafer and wine at communion since we can't share the chalice right now.
the vessels that we use are kept on this shelf here in the sacristy and we set up for both services at the same time but we only take things out to the credence table for the eight o'clock service to begin with. We often use this particular chalice for the eight o'clock service. It's not written in stone and you don't have to, but Father Will likes a chalice that has this called a knopf, K-N-O-P-F, because it's easier for him to put his hand on when he's um, giving communion. So this we use this one normally at eight o'clock. So we put this out and we get a purificator gale. And it gets folded and placed on top of the chalice. Then we take this pattern and put it on top. We take priest host <clears throat> there's a cross on the chalice and there's a cross on the patent and we make sure that they're lined up and then there's a cross on the priest host and we try to make sure that it is also lined up we have the cross the cross and the cross Then we take a corporal. This is the Eucharistic pattern and it goes on top. And then we take a corporal. Corporals are folded differently than any of the other linens. They're folded inside out. And you want to make sure that when you unfold it, the cross is at the bottom. So it comes up first. So the bottom comes up first, the top comes down, right and then left. And the reason we fold this backwards from the other linens is that if there are any crumbs that fall during the service, um, on the altar, they fall on here, and when we fold it up, they're co contained inside the cloth, and then we can take the cloth and shake it outside so that any of the crumbs, the bread, the body of Christ, does not go down the drain, it goes outside. And that goes on top there. So then we take, <clears throat> we take the chalice, with our hand on top and grab the knop. And we put it on the credence table. And this is how we're setting up for not having someone help the priest with the service, but the priest does the setting up of the altar himself. Then we go and get the wine and the water. This is the water cruet that's used at the, the 8 o'clock service and we're also using it at the 10.30 right now. And we put about that much water in it, just up to this lip. And we use bottled water. Yeah. 
you see the lip inside? Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. You see there, there's a little rim inside? And we fill it to there. Right now we have this glass cruet to use for wine. Wine is kept in the bottom of the cabinet. And we don't put as much as we often would do because we're not being able to have wine. It's only being used by the priest. but we want to put enough so that it can be seen by the parishioners while the communion is being consecrated. We're going to set this out for the 8 a.m. service. We use both of these two cruets for 1030. So what we do is we come between the two services, we take the communion vessels um, back into the sacristy and clean them and put them away except for these two which we refill with wine and water to use for the 1030 service. If we had a server helping at the altar, the handles would go facing the wall. But because we don't, they go to the front because the priest needs to grab them. So the wine goes closest to the chalice and the water goes on the other side of the wine. Also in the ombre, We have two picks, and these picks have the gluten-free uh, wafers in them. If they were empty or very low, we would take them out of the ombre and place them at the back on the credence table, and then the priest would know that we have filled them with unconsecrated wafers, and then they would consecrate those wafers during the service. But these are full, and they have wafers in them, so we put them back in the ombre, and the priest will take them out when they're ready to serve at eight o'clock. We're using wine with a drop, I mean a wafer with a drop of wine in it, instead of having the bread box that has the wafers in them normally, what we're doing is we're putting them in um, two of the patents, but they have, we're using the ones that have the, the, the bowl shape to them, so they have a rim so that the wafers don't fall out. to make sure that I wash my hands before I start. <laughs> I had washed my hands early before I started setting up for the baptism, but I always wash my hands again before I touch the wafers. There are 60 wafers in this bag, and so we tried to put about half in each pattern, and it's just kind of an eyeball. <clears throat> and I'm gonna carry these to put them on the credence table, and Gail is going to open up the purificator as, no, just one. 
all the way open. And then she's going to place it over the top of the two patents with the wafers on them. And we do that just so that they are kept clean. No bugs, no gnats or anything like that. All right, so this is at the present time what the credence table would look like for the eight o'clock service. We have the sanctuary line gets changed um, every Saturday. Um, it is able to burn for a week, and the candles are kept down here. And you need to make sure that you straighten the wick. We light the new sanctuary candle from the old so that the light is still continuous. And it takes a few minutes before that wick burns down and if you move it before it burns down then it won't catch right and burn properly and then you end up having something like this which we don't want. Okay, we can blow that out now now, uh -huh, and then just place it by the wastebasket on the floor till it um, solidifies and then we can throw it in the trash. Okay, it's ready to go in. And Gail is going to put this back, and you may stand on the chair if you need to, um, in the stand right next to the armory. chalice up for the 1030 service but we leave it here in the sacristy and then the person that comes in between the 8 o'clock service and the 10 o'clock 1030 service to do the switch over um, takes it from here and puts it on the credence table. So we need a patent a corporal and a purification. I mean, not a pat, I'm sorry, a pall. A what? A pall. This is a, a Eucharistic pall, P A L F. This is, this is the pat. I'm getting my oh. words mixed up. Oh, right. There's the purificator and then a corporal. So, just like for 8 30, we open the purificator over. The chalice, which will work with corporal. corporal. And this does have a cross on the front, but this this 
patent does not have a cross on it, so it doesn't make any difference. But again, when we take the crease hose out, we want to make sure that this cross on the, on the priest hose is lined up with the cross on the bottom of the chalice. And then the pall goes on top. And I always check just to make sure that the corporal is folded properly, and it is because the cross is at the bottom. Right, left, and we're just going to put this right over here for the time being. And we have the wafers for the 1030 service, but we're using the same two patterns that we use at 830, so we're just going to leave these in the bag for right now, placed right here. So that's the clean work. Now I get to do the messy work. Do you know how to fill the candles? Not really. I'll just assume I don't. Okay. Now we're going to fill the candles. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm going to do one, and then I'll let you do one. All right. So this is, we use this carry liquid paraffin. I like to bring the candles into the sacristy because, in case I spill. Yeah. So if you want to get the other candles. Sure. Okay. The first thing I do, and you can you can do with me. Sure. I take um, a piece of the paper towel and I wipe the inside rim of the follower. This is the follower. To get any soot that's off. There's a tiny little hole in the top of the follower, right by the wick. And that hole needs to be free of soot Otherwise, air doesn't get down into the oil and it doesn't burn well. Then very gently, I squeeze the wick to get some of the soot off. And you notice the wick is only about a sixteenth of an inch sticking out because otherwise you'll have a torch when you light it and <laughs> we use Almay candles and paraffin and in the Almay guide it tells you so you can read this anytime you need to it tells you exactly how to change the wick how to clean the candles and how tall this wick should be. And the easiest way okay, where's my stuff? This is a T-pin, kind of what people use to put their wigs on their styrofoam heads with. <laughs> and you come in the loop of the wick. Don't stick it in the wick, just come through the loop of the wick. And you unscrew the candle follower and hold it to the side.
and then you pour the oil because if you let go of the follower the wick will come flying out and you'll have oil everywhere and you fill that about to here Can you? and then it's important to wipe off the grooves on the candle and wipe down the candle and then while you have the tea pin in there put your finger on the wick and pull it down and the tea pin lays across the top of the follower and that's as tall as you want the wick and then you remove the tea pin and then screw the follower back on and then stop don't tighten it um, I mean make sure it's not loose but don't don't continue to tighten it. Once it catches, that's all you need to do. So that's one candle. We have this template that we use. This goes on corner and the candlestick goes in the temple and that's where we know those be equally placed over here through the loop and let it lean on top and this candle's almost full oops I need paper towel paper towel please which one paper towel oh I'm sorry okay and then you pull that down so that it lays flat pull the tea pin out and put the follower back on and then stop because it, it's and I know I dropped a little oil so I'm gonna thank you make sure that I wipe the candle off or off and some people could put this on the counter to do but I, it's too tall for me to see on the counter, so that's why I put it on the floor. All right, so would you like to put that one on the altar gate? Sure. Thank you. Because we have a baptism, we have to change the hangings on the pulpit and the lectern. Um, they're green right now, and we're going to change them to white. Our hangings are in this cabinet, and this is the white set um, with this beautiful seashells, very appropriate for baptism. And on the back, we have written, this says lectern. So if you will take the cover off of the lectern. The one on this side, mm -hmm. yes, okay. And then take the green hanging off, then you can put the white hanging on, and I'll put this on the uh, okay. acolyte pew right here.
and then this one says pulpit. And in, in the closet, we try to keep the lectern on the right side of the rail and the pulpit on the left side of the rail. Doesn't always happen, but we try to because it usually makes it easier when taking them out. So we always take the spongy microphone off before we take off the cover. Where, where, what this cover is from is out on the outside. For example, this is the pulpit, and so we want to make sure that it says pulpit. Then we, then we remove our green hanging. There's heavy wooden bars in the bottom of the hanging, um, and you want to make sure that that lays up against the lip of the pulpit. And while I'm speaking of the hangings, all of our hangings were handmade by Mary Dianish, one of our parishioners. So they are one of a kind, specifically made for Holy Cross. Faith Memorial. Then you put the sponge back on the microphone and, and I try to make sure it's kind of straight. Then we, we put the hangings back in the closet. on the left hand side of the rail and lectern goes on the right hand side of the rail. Gail is, going, is, is doing is, is she's folding these and we're going to take the covers off of all of the chairs, the pews, and the kneelers. And so that's, we'll just demonstrate folding one. I don't think we need to fold. Well, as I said, you know, every, every cover has its name written on it. And we prefer that when we fold it, we put it on the outside so that when we're cleaning up, at 10.30, it's easy to find the right cover for the right thing. This one is for the bishop's chief.
this is the missile stand and unfortunately as you can see the back of it gets fingerprints we try to wipe them off after every service we always don't get them and so we check it and when we see these fingerprints we do need to clean it so we have gloves right here And we have brass cleaner. I think I'd be used to putting these on there. <laughs> and this doesn't take very much of the cleaner. And sometimes it's easier when we're cleaning a lot of brass, we take it to the kitchen um, because A, there's more light and B, more room. <laughs> And we clean brass um, three times a year and silver twice a year. And all of the altar guild comes together on those two days. Um, and, and we work and we do all of the silver and all the brass in the chapel and here in the church. So then we take the clean, freshly polished nestle stand, make sure we rub around the bottom so that it doesn't get, we place it on the altar, and we place the missile on the stand. The only other thing we need to do is we need to mark the book for the reading. And we take the bulletin for this week that are in the back of the church. And Gail, I do not have my glasses on. Oh. So would you um, tell me what the reading is? First Kings 19. Four to eight. This is last, this was last Sunday. Oh. No. Yeah, this was the eighth. Today's the eighth, yeah. Mm -mm. I can't see, there it is. Oh, okay. 19, four to eight. Yep, that's it. Okay.
And so then we just mark the book and put that back. And other than the fact that we get eight of these bulletins from the back, we put them in the baskets, which we can do in just a minute, that go home for with the Eucharistic ministers, we're finished.